Hi, I'm John Nelson. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to walk through the creation of a hexagonal tessellated aggregation of nautical piracy over the last 40 or so years. Now, the data wants to look like this by default, WGSA4 projection, a bunch of dots stacked up on top of each other, but we're going to take steps to make it look like this, and I'll explain how and why. So first of all, let's grab the data. So the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency manages and curates this list of reported incidents of nautical piracy. So pirates, like yar, are kind of pirates. Uh, and they make it available to you. Filter it, search it, uh, but you can also download the bulk of the features as a geographic file. And there's 8,000 of them, and that's what I've just done. So let me find it in my file system, and then we're gonna fire up ArcGIS Pro and drag the data into the map. Now this data is actually unprojected. It happens to line up here because my map is WGSA4, but it doesn't know it's WGSA4, and I'll almost guarantee you that if you have unprojected data, it's, it's WGSA4. So here I am just defining this layer as being WGSA84 saying, hey, you're WGS84. And what that means is then I can reproject into other things, whereas before I couldn't have. So here they are, and now I'm gonna get out of WGS84 as fast as I can. And of course I'm going to choose the Equal Earth projection. An amazing new projection that is equal area, covers the whole world. Um, developed by Buyan Shalrich and Tom Patterson. It's a lovely projection, give it a shot. Um, but most of my action is kind of off to the side, so I'm going to modify this projection and change its central meridian from 0 to 40. And now it's uh, kind of a more appropriate view of this data, more geographically centered and balanced. <clears throat> so, uh, my base map needs to change. I'm going to explore the living atlas and I'm choosing Firefly base map imagery. Firefly base map imagery is just the darker, desaturated version of uh, the, the world um, imagery base map. And right now all I can see is a white background, so I'm gonna change that to black. And, oh, immediately it's just so much better. So here are all my points, um, but I've got still kind of an abrupt edge at the left and right of my map. So I'm gonna drag in this layer that I was just handy little cheap layer I've got that is just a square that covers the whole world. And I'm gonna get rid of its fill, and instead of an outline, I'm just gonna give it a gradient stroke around the outside, and make it rather thick, and then offset it by about half of its thickness. And I'm gonna give it a full opaque black outline, trans, uh, transitioning to a fully transparent black outline. So it looks like this, kind of like an inner shadow. And if I hit apply, you can see around the edges that it's a little bit of a softer edge, kind of like the world is a little bit more real and tangible and touchable. And it's just kind of a nice feathering effect. So vignettes, give them a try, explore that. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be black, it be white or whatever the background color of your map is. So now I'm going to look for some ArcGIS Pro Firefly symbology in the form of a style. So I just Googled Firefly Symbology Pro whatever, and I'm downloading a style file here, it's a StyleX file extension, and I'll just drop it into my project folder, <clears throat> and uh, I'll add it to my project. So here is the Firefly StyleX, and in ArcGIS Pro, after I'm done managing my file, ArcGIS Pro, so catalog. There's a category for styles, right here. And if I add a style, it's just a matter of pointing to that file, which is pretty cool, and it's easy. And it gives you this gallery of symbols that have already been predefined for you, so you can have consistent maps across your organization, um, or just for yourself if you use the same style over and over again. And I use Firefly over and over again, I have to admit. So instead of these just kind of pale purple dots. Let's open up the gallery and now we have Firefly. So Firefly are these cool little glowing dudes and um, they have this kind of radial degradation so that they, they kind of have a fuzzy glow effect. 
Um, and if I zoom in, I can see why there's all kinds of rich data. When I zoom out to the world extent, <clears throat> this data has a problem because there's so much stacking that happens in tight, frequently pirated geographic locations that I really don't have a sense for overall where stuff is happening more. Just it's it's uh, just loaded with points. And so uh, one way to avoid that problem is to create an aggregation. So first I'm going to cast a hexagonal net over my map. And you can do that with this generate tessellation tool. And I'm going to save it <clears throat> to my project folder, of course. And I'll just name it something that makes sense to me. And instead of a hexagon, I'm going to choose a transverse hexagon. So that's a new feature. Uh, transverse hexagon is just the pointy sides up and down, also known as the cool way. So there's uh, regular hexagons, which kind of point sideways, and then transverse hexagons, which point up and down. Way cool. Um, giving it a size of 50k square kilometers and running it. <clears throat> uh, and I've given it the same projection as my base map, which is equal area. So if you're going to aggregate into areas, they really should be based on an equal area projection. Otherwise, it's geographic heresy. So now, uh, I've got all these hexagons falling off the side of my map. <clears throat> and I'm going to say, hey, hexagons, um, select everything that's not touching my base map there. And then I'm just going to delete those. Just a quick way of getting rid of the excess hexagons. Excess hex. I'll save my edits, close this. Now, uh, I've kind of cast this hexagonal net over the whole world. Well, now what? Well, there's this amazing thing called join by location. And what it does is smash two layers into each other based on a geographic property. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose intersection. I'm going to say, hey, hexagons, add up all the incidents of piracy that happen within each cell. And that way we kind of breathe some knowledge of piracy incidents into the hexagons themselves. Instead of just being raw hexagons that don't know anything, now there are hexagons that know how much activity has happened within each cell, which is actually pretty cool. So let's see if it worked. I'm gonna open the attribute table and there's a field in there called join account. Now, these are all zero, but there's a bunch down there with a lot of joints, and that just tells me that, yeah, it worked. They added up into it. And let's, let's open our symbology and just do a quick um, graduated color scheme on this, just to see, oh yeah, okay, cool. Yellow's where no piracy happened, and then it goes right up to red where there's lots of piracy. That's great. Um, but I wanna try a graduated symbol map instead of just a color field so that I can kind of see back into my base map. Um, the human visual system is better at uh, ascribing more to uh, actual scaled symbols than it is for interpreting uh, a range of hues. And so in this example, I'm just gonna make my mesh a little bit cooler looking, kind of a, a semi-transparent cyan color. And now for my default symbol, instead of just a Pac-Man-like yellow blob, I'm gonna make it a glowing firefly symbol. And now you can see, oh cool, this is, this is working. But do you see all those points all over the world? That's because it's saying anything with zero is gonna get the smallest point. But I'm gonna hide those, so I'm gonna create a definition query and say, just go ahead and show only the ones that have more than zero incidents of piracy. And now all of a sudden we've got a much clearer picture. We've cleaned up all those areas of non-piracy, which for this map we don't really care about, right? We only care about where piracy did happen. And so now that we've got this graduated symbol map um, of piracy, so less piracy is smaller, more piracy is larger. I'm going to kind of play with that uh, scale range. Now something I like to do with firefly symbols is stack up two different colors of the symbols. And that way you get this nice kind of glowing hue effect where if you look at a flame, you know, it kind of goes from yellow to the inside kind of out to a, a warmer, darker amber color on the outside. And so I'm just gonna get like a, a smaller white hot center. And then for my outer layer, I'm gonna give it kind of a, a darker heat glow. And it 
looks it just looks cool. Right? It's the same layer. I just duplicated it. You get this kind of doubling up of the hue. It's just kind of a nice effect. Good organic visualization. So here it is. This is our aggregated piracy map of 40 or 41 years of nautical piracy. Where is it bad? You know, where is it bad? Um, do not read this list of things that we just accidentally learned. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your watching.